This story is about my dad's crazy ex-girlfriend. My dad has horrible luck with women. He's like a crazy magnet. Every woman he's ever dated, except for his current girlfriend, has been abusive both mentally and physically. This list includes my mother. But this story is about his last girlfriend, Mary. She has gone from stalking not only him, but me, my husband, and our daughter too. They met at a Christmas party and hit it off. He had just gotten out of another bad relationship with a different woman that he had been on and off with for about three years. She was the classic narcissist type. Well, Mary seemed different. She claimed that she was also just out of an abusive relationship. They were dating for about three months, but she would never allow him over at her place. He didn't find it weird until he received a call from a man who claimed to be Mary's husband and wanted to know how my dad knew her. At first, my dad thought this guy was her ex still trying to control her, but things began to add up. He finally confronted Mary and she gave him this sob story about how her ex was refusing to sign the papers, but they were still separated. But my dad did a bit of digging and even talked to Mary's parents at one point. He found out that not only was Mary definitely still married, but was not even separated from her husband. As far as everybody in her life knew, she was happily married and my dad was just a friend, if they knew about him at all. Needless to say, he broke up with her. And that's when she lost it. She began showing up at my dad's job, calling in the middle of the night and texting him over 50 times a day, all of the classic hallmarks of an insane stalker. My dad moved states twice and changed his number several times to try to get away from her, but she always seemed to find him. Love letters would arrive in the mail, or she would call saying that she was coming to see him. Then somehow she discovered my phone number, probably sometime after my dad moved. She started texting me almost as much as him. Once I married my husband and my daughter was born, she really went all out, sending me presents for her new granddaughter, always wanting me to give her updates. I never replied and either sent back the unopened packages or donated the items she had sent directly to me from the shops. Everything came to a head when she arrived at my dad's doorstep with a casserole. She handed it over to his roommate and told him she made this because she noticed that my dad was losing weight. My dad's roommate tossed it out for him. He didn't want to risk being poisoned since he had just applied for a restraining order. That same night she showed up at my apartment it was after 1 a.m. when she started knocking at my door. I was grateful that I had sent my toddler to my aunt and uncle's. She left banana bread at my doorstep that we threw out as soon as my husband got home. The very next night, I again left my daughter with my aunt and uncle in case she came back. And it turns out, she did. I started receiving waves of text messages from her as she pounded on my door. She wanted to see her grandchild and have some girl time with me. They slowly evolved into demands for me to open up the door. Of course, I called the police. While I was on the phone with the dispatcher, my neighbor had already come out ready to take her on. He told her that the cops were on the way because his wife had already called them. She disappeared into the park across the street after that. The cops didn't find her that night, but my dad's restraining order was granted. We have since moved across the state, but she still texts me from time to time, wanting to know how my dad is or what my daughter is up to. I never answer, but I do save all of her messages, just in case I have to file my own restraining order someday. I have to apologize in advance. I'm not the most amazing storyteller, but I'm going to try to write everything down as I remember it happening. I used to date this guy named Norman back in high school. I'm 29 now and I have a 9-year-old daughter, so this must have been around 12 to 13 years ago. 
I guess we were each other's first real love relationship. We even wore promise rings, which was a pretty big deal back then. We talked about getting married and what our life together would be like. Basically things people say or do when they've been together a year as teenagers. So as things go on, we began to argue and fell into a cycle of breaking up and getting back together. I was immature and stupid, and I ended up getting together with another guy during one of our breakup periods. It became a messy love triangle situation, and Norman and I finished for good after I chose this other guy. Not my proudest moment, but I was 17, and I lacked insight. Fast forward a few years later, I made a Facebook account, and out of curiosity one day, I looked up Norman. We added each other on Facebook and I messaged him apologizing for what happened between us. I was happily married at this time and we had just had our daughter. Norman was a good sport about it. And we remained amicable friends through social media. I really only ever talked to him to say happy birthday or randomly comment on a status. Another few years go by and Norman gets into a relationship with a woman named Marissa. I was happy to see him moving on. My own marriage hadn't worked out, but I was happy with my life and with raising my daughter on my own. During Christmas one year, I found an old Polaroid of me and Norman outside of a cabin. It was back when we were dating. I messaged him telling him about it, and I recalled how much fun we had had. He didn't reply, and this was before those scene stamps underneath the messages and later I found out I was no longer on his friends list. A few months later, I get a message from Marissa. She basically called me names and said that she saw the message I had sent him months ago. She told me never to contact him again and that I needed to get over him. She went on to boast about how a charm bracelet he had once given me was nothing compared to what he bought her these days. She said that the silver promise rings were BS and he had bought her a beautiful gold engagement ring with several diamonds. Well, I never responded to that craziness. I got off of Facebook and not long afterwards I ended up making an entirely new profile and adding only my close friends and family. Over the next few years, I would get requests from people I didn't know. I somehow knew that it was all her, because the first account that I had mistakenly added began sending me abusive messages, calling me all kinds of names and saying that I would never find true love. Afterwards, I never added anyone else again that I personally did not know. I don't know how she kept finding my other accounts. She tried adding me on Instagram, Twitter, and she even somehow found out what my phone number was. When Snapchat became a thing, I got a request from a user who was using one of my Facebook friends' names, but on their profile it had whore and bitch in cursive writing on paper. I kept blocking and maintaining no contact because honestly, there was nothing else I felt I could do. This year I had joined a dating app and I met a guy within the first week. His name was Nate and he had a few pictures of himself. He was average looking so it didn't raise any red flags with me. He said that he had an android phone, so he couldn't FaceTime me, however we could talk on the phone. It was definitely a man's voice that I was conversing with. We texted over the next few weeks, and things seemed to be going well, so I thought it would be okay for a meetup, so we scheduled a time and place. A week before this was supposed to happen, he asked me about my past relationships. I didn't think too much of it when he asked me about my first real relationship. He seemed keen on details and asked me if I had feelings for my ex. I assured him I didn't, but that I also didn't hate him because I was the one who messed things up. And he was actually a very good guy. We talked a lot about that relationship and then he said he was looking forward to meeting me. We had chosen to meet at an outdoor cafe because I didn't like the idea of him showing up at my house 
since I didn't actually know who he was. I was very excited. This was my first date in a very long time. So imagine my confusion when I saw a woman spot me and smile and started walking over. When she sat down, I was too shocked to say anything. And yes, it was Marissa. She had a smug look on her face and she said, Hey, babe, and kept smiling. She confessed that it was her the entire time. At that point, I honestly didn't know what to say. What did I ever do to this girl to get all these reactions from her and for her to invest all this time into doing this to me? This is what she told me. Almost six years ago, when she and Norman got together, he told her about his first relationship. She went on his friends list and saw me and went through all of my pictures and posts, trying to see what he saw in me. Then when I messaged him, she confronted him over why I had any pictures of me and him together and why he needed to have me on Facebook. That's when he unfriended me and promised her that he would never talk to me again. She told me that she hated me and said that I was someone who loves playing games with people's emotions and that she wanted to give me a taste of it. She said that she made up all these accounts so she could keep an eye on me and make sure that I wasn't going to be in the same city as her and Norman. I live outside their city, by the way. She would walk by places I mentioned that I would be at, to make sure that Norman wasn't meeting up with me. She also knew where I worked through my LinkedIn. She even recruited one of her friends to play the role of Nate on the phone. The most disturbing part, however, was when it came to my daughter. This woman had actually become extremely fixated on my daughter. She was convinced that she shared some similarities with Norman and had become obsessed thinking I had a kid with him that I kept secret. She told me to not even think about suddenly revealing it to him as some ploy to get back together with him and that she would be the only one to give him a baby. I was beyond horrified all I remember doing was getting up from the table and telling her never to contact me again. I got on my car and just sat there in silence for a bit. The first thing I did was call my daughter's school and alert the front desk of a possible situation where someone who wasn't me or her father would try to pick her up. I called up my brother afterwards and told him what happened. He urged me to call the police. I did but I ended up getting the whole spiel about I didn't have any documented proof it's her, so they really couldn't help me out. It's been two months. I haven't heard anything from her. My brother thinks that she got what she wanted by asserting herself as Norman's one and only, and now she will leave me alone. Still, I have massive paranoia when it comes to what I post on social media and where she might be lurking next. I have told my family and close friends about the situation and warned them not to add any strange profiles. I also showed my neighbors a picture of Marissa so that they could call the police if they saw her around the house. I wouldn't put it past her to know my address and start peeping in on our windows. I also changed out the locks as a precaution. I'm going to warn everybody ahead of time. This might be a tad bit lengthy, as I have quite a bit to say, and well, a lot has happened over the last year when it comes to this girl. I'm going to start off by saying that I was with her on and off for almost six years. The on and off part should have been a good indication that I should have jumped ship a long time ago, but I constantly allowed her to burrow back into my life there really should be a subreddit called Shit My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend Has Done or something close to that because I have enough stories involving this girl that I could write a book. Hell, I could write a whole TV series. I'll give you some information about our relationship and what caused me to break up with... Well, I'll call her crazy because that's what she is. About two years ago or so, 
Crazy started calling and texting me after we had been broken up for about six months. At first, I decided that I was just going to ignore her because I knew if I let her back in, things would just go to hell in a handbasket again. However, one night I had been drinking and I got this lame-ass sentimental feeling and decided to answer one of her texts. That was all it took. She started coming over and eventually we ended up together again. We were together for close to seven months before I finally got fed up with her shit and kicked her out of my apartment. She was physically abusive and a mental mind fuck. If I didn't let her use my car whenever she wanted, gave her money whenever she claimed that she needed it, or basically do whatever the hell she asked, she would have a tantrum like a three-year-old and caused more drama than any one person could endure. During our time together, she managed to get herself into some real trouble after she beat some dude over the head with a beer mug at a local bar we frequented. What really ended the relationship was when she started using meth and was bringing that shit into my home. I tried getting her help, but she turned it around on me as if I was trying to change her. So I gave up and told her mother that she needed to get her daughter the fuck out of my place before I called the cops and had her removed. I told her that we were done and I never wanted to hear from her again. At this point, I had given her multiple opportunities to change, but she outright refused and made it seem like I was the problem. Whatever. I was done. The problem was, she definitely was not. The day it finally ended was the beginning of her torment. She started her attack by creating a Craigslist ad under the escort section with a fake picture and my phone number as a contact. I received over 500 calls and text messages from random men looking to get laid. This lasted for about a week before it calmed down. If that wasn't enough, the same night while my phone was blowing up, I see the security guard from my apartment complex nosing around my car, shining his flashlight in the windows. I go outside and ask the guy, is there a problem? I got a report that this car here is abandoned and needs to be removed. Ah, oh, the fuck it does. That's my car. And I live in the apartment right over there. I ended up having to get my title and a valid driver's license to keep this douchebag from calling the towing company and having my shit removed. The next day rolls around and I'm still getting a massive amount of texts and calls through my whole workday which was really pissing me off. I get home after work and sit down to try to relax when there came a knock at my door. I look out and I see some guy I've never met before standing outside. I don't answer. I wait for him to leave. And then I look down my balcony and see this guy on his phone standing right out front. I yell down to him. Hey, can I help you? Um, is Crazy here? No, that's my ex. I kicked her out the other day. Maybe check her mom's house where she's staying. I ended up talking to this guy further. It turns out that she set up a dinner date with him and gave him my address as where she was staying. That night, another three guys showed up looking to have a dinner date with her. I had work the next day, and while I'm there, she starts sending me text messages, pictures of outside my apartment, with messages like, It's quite breezy in the apartment with your patio door open. I hope your dog finds his way back home. So needless to say, this shit was stressing me out the entire day. At the time, I was almost positive it was bullshit but there's always a chance that crazy actually broke in. I got home later to find my apartment the way I had left it, but the pure mind fuck of it all was close to giving me an ulcer. This entire time I'm ignoring her, hoping that this shit will come to an end soon. But no, it only escalates. Once again, after work, 
I get a knock at my door while I'm watching TV. I check the people and there are two police officers standing outside. I'm just thinking, now what the fuck? As I open the door, I am greeted by two relatively large gentlemen in uniform with shitty looks on their faces. Uh, can I help you officers? Are you so and so? Yeah. Is there a problem? Only if you consider sexually assaulting a young woman to be a problem. Can you provide your whereabouts for the last two hours? I was internally shitting myself. But I responded. Well, I just got home from work like 45 minutes ago. And what do you mean sexually assaulted? Who told you that? This insane bitch stepped up her game calling in a false police report and getting the cops to come question me about it. That is bold. The cop responds, I'm not at liberty to provide that information, but I do need you to provide some proof that you weren't in the Galt area between the hours of 2 and 5 this afternoon. Now I'm actually starting to get pissed, knowing that I am 100% innocent of this allegation, and so I kind of get an attitude which didn't help my situation at the time. If you go to my place of work and verify that I was there till four, that will prove that I had nothing to do with this. And furthermore, the person accusing me of this crime, are you going to arrest them for filing a false police report? What I heard next floored me. I'm not so sure it was a false report. Your car is still warm and you look guilty. No fucking shit my car is warm. I just drove home from work less than an hour ago, Einstein. How about doing some detective work, chief? They eventually left my apartment, but before doing so they told me not to leave, and they would be back if my story didn't check out. Well, they never came back, and I called into the police station multiple times to get an update. And you know what they told me? no police report had been filed and there was no record of any police being dispatched to my address on the day in question. How the fuck? I was seriously about to lose my mind. How could she continue to do this with no consequences? Mind you, I'm still receiving texts and calls less than in the beginning but they were still coming in. I think it was like a week or so and things have finally calmed down, minus the calls and texts, but even those weren't coming in that heavy anymore. I started to think that she was done, and I might be able to get back to living my normal, drama-free life. But... No. I stop at my mailbox after work about a week or so after the whole police situation, and received a letter from the post office. That said, I had changed my address, but if this was incorrect to contact them, to stop the mail from forwarding. So I called them right away, and told them that I haven't moved nor have I filled out a change of address form, so there's no reason to forward my mail elsewhere. They ensured me that my mail would continue arriving at my current address, and that I had nothing to worry about. Well, they were full of it because I didn't get a single piece of mail for the next two months after that day. It took three phone calls and two visits to get it rectified. Now, had it just been me not getting my mail, I wouldn't have been that pissed. But once my mail was forwarded to the address where Crazy was getting it, she used it as an opportunity to get all of my account information for my electric, gas, phone, cable, car, and banking information. I had extra security set up on my bank account so I was safe there, and my car payments weren't going there anyway. But she managed to shut off my cable, electric, and my gas. I also got phone calls from my phone company stating that charges would be applied to my account if I didn't call in. I was furious. I ended up paying an extra $300 in fees to get everything put back into my name, mainly because my apartment complex ended up paying the balances on both accounts and then charged me for it. This was all getting to be too much. I tried calling the cops, and they just kept asking me if I had gotten a restraining order. I explained that I had tried, but she continued to evade being served, 
and after a period of time, if the person isn't served, it's no good. Their response was, Well, we can't help you. Wow, thank you. You can't help me, but you can follow up on a false police report and then ignore that shit like it never happened. Gotta fucking love the cops around here. However, I got a break. If you remember, I mentioned earlier that she was arrested for smashing some dude over the head multiple times with a beer mug. Well, that finally caught up to her, and she got convicted and was given three months in jail. Just three months. Are you kidding me? There's no way in hell I could go out and beat some guy with a glass object and not get at least a year or longer for that, but somehow she squeaks by with ease. Either way, that meant peace and quiet for at least that period of time. From time to time, I would check in on her status in jail, just to make sure her ass was still locked up. One day I checked and saw that she had been released two days prior. In my head I screamed as loud as humanly possible and started to get paranoid about what this girl might do next. Weeks went by and nothing. Finally, she had given up, or so I thought. A few weeks ago it started with a text. It was a picture of a pregnancy test that showed positive. It came from a number I had never seen before. So I wasn't sure who it was but I had my suspicions. Figuring it was her, I text back saying, Haha, <laughs> finally. Any ties to you I had are broken. Have fun with the poor smug who knocked your crazy ass up. You obviously don't know who this is. Which was true, and it really got me thinking, considering I had talked to a few other women since being with my ex. Either way, I ignored it and just hoped it would go away. Over the next week, I kept getting texts. Only that one picture. Nothing else. Once again, I kept ignoring it until I got another message. This time it was a picture of a woman holding her stomach, showing that she was pregnant. Her face was cropped out. Immediately after that, there was another text that said, I guess we know who the fertile one is out of the two of us now, don't we? That right there told me it was my ex. We had actually tried to have a kid, but were never able to. Thank God. So I responded back. Awesome. Have a great life with whatever smuck you managed to get to impregnate you. Now kindly, fuck off. She replied back with stupid insults that are irrelevant to the story and I just ignored them anyway, figuring that she had done what she wanted, rubbed in the fact that I could possibly be sterile, which to me was a win-win. I can't have kids, and now she's got other shit to deal with that'll keep her from bothering me. A week or so went by, and I'm the type of person that tends to do shit last minute, so when it comes to waking up in the morning and going to work, I sleep as late as I possibly can. So when I get to my car, I need to leave right away or I could end up being late. So I'm heading to my car when I notice that something is stuck on it. There are three magnets on my car with stupid ass slogans on them. I really didn't pay attention. I just needed to get them off my car because I had to go to work. What I did notice is that the bitch super glued them to my car so it wasn't easy to get them off, and I still have remnants of magnet on my car. That wasn't the worst part of it, and to explain this next part, I first have to tell a short story. I explained how Crazy got into using meth. Well, one day, when I allowed her to use my car, she went to go meet her brother at his apartment. They got into an argument, he owed her some meth and he didn't have it, but she thought he was holding out on her. In turn, the brother wanted to leave, and in an attempt to stop him, Crazy used my car to barricade him in. And when she did this, he got out and kicked in my driver's side window 
and then got into his truck and proceeded to run into my car until she moved out of the way, so I didn't have a driver's side window for the longest time. He didn't have insurance and is a fucking tweaker, so getting money for him to fix the window was pretty much impossible. I'm also lazy and do things last minute, so I never got it fixed. The weather here in California allows for me to drive around with a broken window and not worry about the interior of my car getting ruined. Anyway, back to the story. Now I have magnets stuck on my car, and I'm about to get in when I see approximately 5 pounds of dog shit with open condoms just chilling on my driver's seat. You've got to be fucking kidding me! I think to myself, as I began looking for something to quickly clean this shit up out of my car. There was a plastic bag on the ground, so I grabbed it. And thankfully, the shit was dry, so I was able to get it out of my seat. I'm sure I still ended up sitting on some of it, but I had no time to waste, as I was already late and needed to get my ass to work. I got there and told my boss. Thankfully, he's a cool guy and allowed me to take the first half hour off of work so I could clean it out properly. Needless to say, I have replaced the driver's side window on my car. Now I wait, wondering what the fuck this girl has in store for me next. My guess, something even more fucked up. I know I'm going to get these two questions. The first, why haven't I changed my number? And the second, why haven't I moved? To answer the first, I have too many people that know my current number, and I'm not going to let that bitch win by inconveniencing myself and changing it. Second, I plan on moving but I don't have the greatest rental history, so breaking my lease wouldn't be the smartest idea right now. So I'm sticking it out and hoping crazy just fucks off. That moment I was dreaming, I knew it instantly, even though it was summer break. I was in a hallway at my school, and I had a knife in my right hand for some reason. A knife? I don't understand. I guess all dreams are like this. Hey everyone, this is your Uncle Unit. Thank you so much for checking out my video. If you have a story that you would like me to narrate on this channel, please send it to my email, unit522submit at gmail.com. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you would like to support this channel even further, you can check out my merch store. There's a link for that in the description. I look forward to hearing from you, and I hope you stay tuned for the next video. Until then, Never forget.